Hi, welcome to Java Coding Assist. This is part 2 of the topic Role Based Access Control. If you are watching this video directly, please do watch part 1 of this topic and then continue with this part 2. We have discussed a lot about Role Based Access Control and how to configure that in Web Security Configurer Adapter. Let's go directly and see how to configure that in controllers or in service classes. We are going to move this configuration either to the controllers or to the service classes. Let's see how to do that in controller. First we can configure that in user rest controller which contains the rest endpoints to access the user's resource. First we have to annotate the class with enable global method security and pre post enabled is equal to true. This user rest controller contains many endpoints to access the user's resource. The first one is the get mapping which returns all the users from the database and this endpoint should be accessible only to the admin and manager roles. To enable this we have to use the Annotation pre-authorized. This annotation takes in an expression where we have to specify which roles are allowed to access this HTTP get method as role of role admin or it should has a role of role manager. We have to go back to web security and remove the configuration here. Let's go back and check whether this works. Gabby with an user role is accessing this user's endpoint. We get a forbidden error message. This is because Gabby has the role user and the role user doesn't has access to this endpoint. Let's try with an, another user who has an admin role. The admin role is able to access this endpoint. We get the list of users. Similarly, the manager role will also have access to this HTTP GET method. We can configure the rest of the HTTP methods too in the same way. Now we can see how to configure the access control at the endpoint level. We can use the same scenario which we used earlier. When an authenticated user wants his details, he should be able to view it. For this, we need to verify whether the incoming user ID is equal to the ID of the user who is requesting that resource. That is, user ID of the authenticated user must match the incoming user ID in the request. For this, we can use the same pre-authorized annotation and within this, we have to give that expression which we used in Web Security Configurer Adapter. We have to make use of that user security component where we check whether the incoming user ID is equal to the ID of that authenticated user. At user security dot has user ID of authentication user ID. It takes in two arguments authentication and user ID. This is the authentication object and this user ID. Both are taken by this user ID and it verifies the user IDs. If this is true, the get user by ID is executed. Let's check the same. Sam with an user ID 1 is trying to access the user details of an another user who has an user ID of 2. He gets a 403 forbidden error message because the user IDs doesn't match. This is how we configure at the endpoint level. This pre-authorize allows you to authorize before calling the corresponding method. It uses the incoming arguments to authorize the user. Only after authorizing the user, it just enters the method and returns the result. We have one more annotation called post authorize 
which after the execution of the method while returning the data it just authorizes and only when the user is authorized it just returns the data but it retrieves the data from the database and before returning the data it just authorize and then returns the result to the client let's see how it works we have a scenario where the user details are returned to the user based on the incoming user name we can see how to post authorize this user to get the details add post authorize this post authorize operation makes use of the return object and then authorizes the user return object the object which is being returned here we are returning the response entity our user object will be within this response entity so return object dot body will give you the user object dot user name we can check whether the user name of the returned user is equal to the authenticated user name what it does is it executes this user details method and before returning the response what it does is it takes a return object and it checks whether the user name of the returned object is equal to the currently authenticated users user name and only when this evaluates to true it just returns the data back to the client this is a difference between a post authorize and a pre authorize so depending upon the scenarios we can either use a pre authorize or a post authorize annotation both authorizes the user but pre authorize authorizes the user before calling the method and authorizes the user based on the incoming arguments whereas post authorize helps you to authorize based on the data that is being returned we have two more annotations pre filter and post filter these two annotations are used to filter the objects from a collection whenever the request comes in with a collection if you want to filter the items out of that collection we use a pre filter and give some expressions to filter the object similarly whenever we return a collection before returning that collection we just filter the objects based on the criteria and then return the result the criteria for filtering is given as an expression inside this post filter let's see an example for this post filter in car controller we have a method called get cars owned by this method returns the cars that is owned by the requested user for this we have made a little change in our car model we have added one more field called owner this field holds the name of the owner who is owning this car let us see how to use the post filter to achieve this right post filter inside this you have to give the expression this post filter gets you access to the returned collection that is filter object dot owner is equal to authentication dot name here we check that the owner field in cars object is equal to the name of the currently authenticated user who is requesting that resource let's run and check here sam is a user who is requesting the cars owned by him so now he gets only those cars which are owned by sam if it is gabby gabby will receive only the list of cars that are owned by gabby what happens is we have list of all the cars that is in the database but while returning that to the client this post filter returns only those cars that are owned by the corresponding user that is it filters the cars based on the name of the user next is the pre filter pre filter too works in the same way but what it does is it first filters the incoming collection and then do the corresponding operation for example if you have a list of cars which needs to be saved in the database or which needs to be updated in the database you can apply the pre filter to filter the collection and then do the corresponding save or update operation the pre filter is used to filter the incoming collection and the post filter is used to filter the outgoing collection both works only with the collection 
these are the different ways to apply the role based access control at the controller level you can do the same thing here in the service layer too that's all for role based access control or role based authorization let me know your thoughts in the comment section thanks for watching bye